In this question, let f such that the domain 0 included up to positive infinity is mapped onto r, where f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. Part a state the range of f. So this is the domain here, 0 included up to infinity, positive infinity. And so really what you need to do is look and see what happens when you substitute these two values into here and that will give you the range where well, you do have to keep an eye out for uh, things like turning points um, because that can change the range values however in this one uh, the square root of x plus one the basic shape of that is it's that kind of shape for the square root of x and then the plus one is moving that back one like that however this is telling you that the domain is from zero to positive infinity. So that means the graph starts here at x equals zero and then to the right. So from there, you can actually see what the range is. So when x is zero, that gives you the y-intercept. And I've kind of got that back to front, x equals zero, y-intercept. So if you let x equals zero in here, you get uh, y is equal to the square root of 0 plus 1, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. So that means the lowest y value is 1, and that's included because that x equals 0 was included. And when you sub positive infinity into here, you get the square root of infinity plus 1, which is really still infinity. So that is the range of that function here with this domain. So that's part A done. In part B, let G such that the domain minus infinity up to C included is mapped onto R where G of X equals X squared plus 4X plus 3, where C is less than 0, C is negative. Part 1, find the largest possible value of C such that the range of G is a subset of the domain of F. So what you're after is the value of C such that the range of G, so range of G is a subset of the domain of F. So how do you start this question? So the range of G is a subset of the domain of F. So first of all, you know the domain of the F function. They've given that to you here. It's zero included up to positive infinity and the range of g. So the range of g, so you really need to look at the graph of this. Because it's a quadratic, um, you've got to check out where the turning point is. So first of all, so g of x is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 3. And then completing the square, you get x squared plus 4x. So half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So you're adding 4 and you would have to minus one so that that's still equal to three. And then in brackets, that becomes x plus two squared and then minus one. And from that, the turning point is minus two, minus one. Remember, it's always the x value that makes the bracket zero and then whatever this number is here. So drawing a little sketch of that. So minus two, minus one is down here and the y-intercept of this quadratic is three. So the graph is doing something like that. And here's the turning point here of minus two, minus one, and the y-intercept of three. So the domain of G is from minus infinity to some value for C. C is a negative number, C is less than zero. So really the part of the graph that you want is from this part on the left all the way up to, but not including that y-intercept. So with that in mind, the range of g is going to be from this lowest value of minus 1 up to, and that's included, up to positive infinity for the y-values. And so that range of g, for it to be contained in the domain of f, it can't be from minus 1 to infinity, it has to have zero as the lowest y value. So now with those two bits of information, the domain of G and also the range of G, 
uh, use both of them to figure out where C is. So the range of G zero to positive infinity, they are the bits of the graph above the X axis, including the X intercept there. So marking that in. So that section there and also this section here uh, from that intercept up there. So both of those bits above the X axis correspond to this range here. And for the domain minus infinity to C, that's one section of the graph from minus infinity, which is on this end of the graph here, to C. And C is a negative number, which for it to have a maximum value, it would have to be this point here, not some point up here where the X value would be less than the value of the X, this X intercept, but it is the X intercept value, which is or can be found by factorizing this. So you get x plus 1 bracket x times 3 when you factorize that equation up there and from here x equals minus 1 and from this bracket minus 3 which is the value of that x intercept there minus 3. So that means that that c value the right hand endpoint of the domain which is where the graph stops according to this domain and is also above the x-axis, uh, above or on the x-axis according to this range. It's definitely this point here. And so c is equal to minus 3, which is the correct answer for part b. In b part 2, for the value of c found in part b i, or part 1, state the range of f of g of x. So f of g of x, that's a composite function. And just remember that these values that you're subbing in, they are the range values of the g function. Those numbers become x values in the f function. So what you need for this is the range of g, which from part um, B part 1, the range values were 0 to infinity, 0 inclusive, and that came about because the maximum value of C was in fact minus 3. So although you don't actually need to use that value of minus 3 in this question, question indirectly, it's part of the range being 0 inclusive to infinity. So it's these values that you need to sub into the f function to get the range of this composite function. So f of 0 to start with, so that becomes the square root. So here's the f function, square root of 0 plus 1, which equals the square root of 1, which equals 1. And then f of, actually do it over here, f of infinity, a very large number, is equal to the square root of infinity plus 1, which is infinity and the square root of that is still going to be infinity. So therefore that range of the composite function is going to be from a value of 1 inclusive because it's inclusive here. So that's a square bracket and then up to positive infinity. And that is the correct answer for part 2 of part b. In this question let h such that all reals mapped onto all reals h of x equals x squared plus 3 state the range of f of h of x and so remember what you are subbing in here to find f of those values of the range you need to get the range values of this h function so a brief sketch of x squared plus 3 so that's just x squared plus 3 like that this lowest value here is a y value of 3 and heads up towards positive infinity. So that's the range of h. So range of h. So you're going to be subbing these two values into the f function because you're doing f of the h values. So f of x again is equal to the square root of x plus 1. And so subbing 3 in, you get the square root of 3 plus 1 which is the square root of 4, which equals 2. And then f of infinity, again, is going to be equal to positive infinity. So 
the range of f of h of x is going to be uh, lowest value 2 inclusive because this 3 was included from the range of h and then up to positive infinity and that is the correct answer for part c.